Welcome to the most rural of Vallentuna in Stockholm. It's an absolutely marvelous day in June. And that got me thinking of the 20th Academy Award 1948. On that particular day, Gentleman's Agreement won an Academy Award for Best Picture. Not only that, but it also scooped up a Director's Award and the Award for Best Supporting Actress. And um, that got me thinking. What else did was released in 1947? Because when I did some snooping around, I found out that I have only seen one movie from 1947, which is Gentleman's Agreement, which begs the question, was that year a bad year? Because to be, to be entirely honest with you, I don't like this movie. And it's also one of these dumb cases where I sort of know why I don't like it, but I have a hard time justifying the very low rating I'm going to give this one. But let's give it a try, shall we? The question is, why did Ronald Coleman win for the doubled life? I have never heard of either the actor or the movie where you had Gregory Peck, the conscience of America and, the, and his generation's Tom Hanks. Uh, so Gregory Peck plays Philip Schuyler, uh, he's a journalist and he gets a job to write about uh, anti-Semitism. And um, he uh, decides to take it a little bit further and goes undercover and and decide to claim that he's Jewish and uh, tells you know people around him friends and stuff like that and uh, immediately they believe him and start treating him in a different way and he gets a little bit upset about this upset as only Gregory Peck can do the man is a damn genius and his life basically turns upside down and that is our movie in a nutshell the question is why don't I like this movie it has nothing to do with you know bad actors or anything there they're good, especially Gregor Peck, who is awesome. He almost always are awesome. Is it that the movie has aged too much? Come to think of it, I think that might be one of the cases, because this movie has more than 70 years of existing. And uh, a lot of things have happened since that then. And the movie seems tame with you know, today's standard. And the subject was apparently very controversial at the time, and it was... Um, and maybe that's why they were playing it safe but all the characters are just so bland and they're just so uninteresting the movie moves kind of slow and i get disinterested in this one really really soon and once again i don't know really why now the whole idea of pretending to be something you're not in order to flesh out people's real opinion about you is interesting and could have been done better but i actually think that borat did a better job of doing that than gentleman's agreement just when i said that i realized what the problem is with this movie it has aged badly i mean we, we have a we have a fantastic director in eli kazan who probably will always be most famous for on the waterfront and a streetcar named desire but it's it's difficult for me to you know put this one in the same category as, you know, dumb American comedies and stupid cheap action movies. But when I saw it, I just couldn't get invested. I just didn't care. I didn't feel like there was any stake in this one. Sometimes this is difficult because I don't know what to say to explain why I didn't like this movie. Apparently I didn't like this movie and I thought it was bad. And uh, it's an important movie, it was probably very important when it was made, but Father Time came and had his way with it and now it just doesn't look as appealing as it probably did 60 years ago or something like that. If you hate something, that's an emotion you can you know, work with. If you love something, that's also an emotion you can work with. But when you feel indifferent, then the rating of 22 might seem as the proper one. This is probably one of the movies that differs the most from the IMDb rating of uh, well above seven. I can't do anything about it. It's just what I think about it. Summer in the wilderness. Not a sound as far as the ear can hear. Till next time, this is the Week Strand signing 
out.